Over the last two, three months, a lot of developments have happened in terms of classification of hematologic malignancies. Uh, the, both the WHO 2002 updated classification and the International Consensus Classification, that's the ICC, have come up with the updated subclassification criteria. And uh, it is, I think, it, even though these teams worked independently, uh, based on the evidence out there, both have uh, uh, taken a genomic uh, based diagnostic approach. So uh, specifically for myelodysplastic syndromes or myelodysplastic neoplasms, as it's called by the WHO, uh, it, uh, uh, there is, um, you know, based on the specific genetic aberrations, we are uh, going to classify them as MDS with defining uh, genomic abnormalities in the presence of SF31, TP53 by allelic alterations, or the isolated DEL5Q. Now, in the absence of these abnormalities, that's when the rest of the cases get classified based on the blast percentage or morphologic features. Uh, similarly, um, the ICC is very much along the same lines. Uh, in addition, ICC offers the option to call it MDS slash AML uh, for cases with at least 10% blast with AML defining abnormalities. So we can see the emphasis of um, the, the importance of looking for these specific abnormalities. Now, some of these abnormalities can be cryptic, like KMT2A or MECOM rearrangement. And some, is, some are always cryptic, like NUP98 fusions. So it is important uh, for the, uh, from a diagnostician perspective, from a clinical laboratory perspective, it's really important to look for these alterations, which is only possible uh, using targeted fish. That would be many, many fish for every patient, which is not uh, 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 resource friendly. Uh, it's an dr uh, enormous drain on the resources. The alternate would be to employ um, novel technologies that are out there uh, that are uh, slowly getting incorporated into clinical care uh, that can interrogate all of these intermediate and large sized variants proposed by these classifications. Um, to that point, I mean, uh, for example, we've just recently uh, uh, seen the New England Journal paper that suggested whole genome sequencing as a feasible alternate for uh, conventional cytogenetic analysis. And uh, we've also put together uh, last month a paper in leukemia on about 101 MDS cases where we used combined structural variant profiling using optical genome mapping technologies uh, with the targeted NGS. So using a combination of the two, we were able to identify, we not only demonstrated concordance with the conventional cytogenetics and other standard of care uh, 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 tests, we, uh, we were able to identify additional abnormalities in a third of these patients. And many of those were biomarkers proposed by these classifications. Uh, in fact, uh, if you look at the molecular IPSS coring system that was published recently, uh, the top three abnormalities that with the highest weight to influence prognosis uh, cannot be easily interrogated using the routine uh, PCR-based targeted NGS that most laboratories have. So these would be the biallelic TP53 alterations for which you need additional fish or chromosomal microarray. Uh, the KMT2A PT, partial tandem duplications, some of which can be evaluated by chromosomal microarray, or you might need a completely different assay. And FLIT3 ITD, we very well know, it's common knowledge that you need an additional PCR. Uh, on the other hand, using either the optical genome mapping or whole genome sequencing, these technologies offer options to look for these. So using, uh, so the key is actually consolidation of multiple tests into one as, as, as few as possible in order to uh, make it uh, resource friendly and to offer it at a reasonable turnaround time for uh, patient care. So I think with the um, new uh, two new classification systems the prognostication systems that have come up in mds it it is time for the uh, uh, healthcare professionals like us in the laboratory to explore these technologies uh, in the clinical lab to uh, uh, enable precision medicine to the highest level